In the NFL, injuries are inevitable. But it's not always the monster tackles and the big hits that leave players hobbled in your fantasy team in limbo. Sometimes, the biggest injuries come from the fields that the players play on. Non-contact leg injury. Holy cow, I cannot believe this. He tried to explode and went down immediately. You've probably seen this stuff a thousand times on TV football games. It's stuff that was tires that they ground up. Knees start hurt when I say it turf. Boy, that <laughs> turf, like, boy. Like, bro. I'd rather practice in thunderstorm with a chance of getting struck by lightning than to run inside on the turf. At the end of the day, it's the NFL, so it's all about business. Stop with the bullshit, NFL owners, okay? And I don't understand it. I don't. It already is very chaotic and very violent. Why are we adding this extra element in this? See how he gets twisted up. This huge body of players saying, like, listen to my experience. Don't just wither me down to a number. What's the issue here, JC? Yeah, there are there are two surfaces that players play on. Grass, which I think everybody knows, they've been playing on since they were kids, and then artificial turf, the rubber pellets and the, you know, the fake plastic carpet. That's JC Treader. He played for 11 years in the NFL as an offensive lineman. Shotgun snap from JC Treader. Now he's the president of the National Football League Players Association. The NFLPA has been fighting to get the league to move to all grass fields for years now. But the wealthiest league in the world, which made $12 billion last year alone, is too cheap to ban turf. Instead, they celebrate it. It's my favorite creation since a ball made of Nerf. So here's one man's ode to artificial turf. And this is what NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell is now saying about the dangers of turf. You know, you've got a, a mixed opinions. What we want to go is on science. Well over 90% of our players prefer to play on grass feel that their bodies feel better, their bodies respond better. You ask any player in the league about turf, they're just like, ah. It hurts your knees, your back. It just takes a toll on your body. It sucks. No one enjoys playing on it. Everyone's too scared to talk about it. And then you look at the data that's brought in, and for 11 straight years, the injury rates on grass have been better than the injury rates on turf. Half the league uses grass. The other half plays home games on turf. A study earlier this year found that playing on artificial turf produced a 28% higher rate of non-contact lower body injuries. Medical professionals will tell you that the reasons are obvious. The evidence out there shows that for foot and ankle injuries, those are the highest risk on, on artificial surfaces. You know, it's like kind of like running on concrete. If you're running on concrete a lot, it's a lot of wear and tear. You can hurt your joints, hurt your ankle. Whereas if you're running on a softer surface or like a grass surface, there's more give, there's more cushion. And also it looks like your cleat might be more likely to get caught on these artificial surfaces and create like a torque or a twisting injury. Later in my career, my knees were not in good shape. When the schedule would come out, the first thing I would do would be circle the games that are on turf and just hope that they weren't like back-to-back -back weeks because I knew like I'm not gonna be able to recover. And when you have all of these players saying the same thing, guys know how much pain they're in from playing on turf. The injuries this year have been piling up with turf fields helping take out one superstar after another. He's down, he's down. No. Holy cow, I cannot believe this. Yet the NFL refuses to budge even as anger from the players continues to mount. All NFL games should be played on grass fields. Take it is a joke. Your, take care of your players, man. It's Kelsey, two straight. Oh, oh, oh. oh no. The data is clear. And yet they want to continue to pursue a turf that jeopardizes the main value that they have. Mind boggling. Why is it happening, JC? I think if they want to be honest, it would be to make money elsewhere they would prefer to be able to host concerts and monster truck rallies, and it's easier to do that when your field is plastic and you can put things over top of it. Unfortunately, over the past year, some teams have gone in the wrong direction. We saw Carolina and we saw Tennessee, both of which used to be grass fields, have recently moved to turf. Mm -hmm. And they both said, like, it's too hard to grow grass. 
Green Bay's got grass, Cleveland's got grass, Pittsburgh's got grass, but Carolina and Tennessee are, I guess, the hardest places to grow grass. They'll figure it out. They'll figure it Always out. Always figure it out. Yeah. You know what I mean? Stadiums with grass fields do hold plenty of concerts and monster truck rallies. Just look at Philadelphia and Tampa Bay. Some teams have come up with novel solutions to maintain all grass fields. In places like Vegas, like Phoenix, they have a field that rolls in and out through a garage door, if you will. That's Professor Trey Rogers, the preeminent expert in replacing turf fields with grass. For decades, he's been deploying a state-of-the-art system designed to work in any modern stadium. The sodom plastic can be developed, put on a roll, transported, laid out after the concert. It is literally ready to play that day. I have seen this sod go in on a Sunday morning and played on a Monday afternoon. We've coined a term recently, we call it farm to stadium, ready. Professor Rogers estimates that this system would cost somewhere between two and three million dollars, pocket change for a league that pays quarterbacks $35 million a year. But owners don't seem too bothered by the expense when the other football, soccer, comes knocking. They change it for soccer players when they come. Yeah. They always wheel in natural grass for I them to play that. in, and then they take it off when they leave. So. These owners want to have European soccer teams and FIFA and the World Cup come to their facilities, and FIFA and the European soccer teams mandate grass. And guess who's developing the tech to make all of these conversions possible? For this World Cup, the amount of sod we're going to need is enormous. And that's where we get in this crazy world that players just cannot wrap their heads around, where these owners are willing to rip up the turf, put in grass, and then once the soccer players are done, rip up the grass and put back down turf for the NFL players to play on. In many cases, your public tax dollars will be subsidizing these temporary conversions. In Texas, the state is giving away millions in tax breaks so that the team can upgrade their stadiums for the World Cup. The public is paying ultra-wealthy Cowboys owner Jerry Jones to grow grass for the soccer tournament, only to rip it up and put turf back down for the NFL season. Ohio's Hamilton County owns the Bengals' Paul Brown Stadium. It's going to spend at least $10 million to fix the place up for the World Cup, including installing a grass field, which will then later be ripped up again to reinstall the turf. The teams in those cities are quick to say, like, hey, it's not our decision. We hear you, but it's up to the city or up to the municipality, which has been interesting because it's really great to say that until the municipality starts siding with the workers. If you want to kind of push the decision off to the local city and local politicians, then let's see what those local politicians have to say when it comes to are they going to stand on protecting workers. Fans in these cities can get involved by pressuring your elected officials to protect the players. The NFLPA is asking everyone to stand up and petition owners to do the right thing here. I think their voices matter. They are the paying customers that keep this entire industry up while we continue to grow year after year after year. As fans, they want to see the best players in the world play. And if there's a surface out there that's decreasing the likelihood for the paying customer to see the best players in the world play, then they should speak up. I think it's pretty simple. The numbers say that grass is healthier for the players, and so I want to play on the best surface that will keep me healthy. There's a lot of money being made in this league, a lot of money that's going around. Yeah. And I feel like at, at least you should be able to you know, take care of the fields, pay the extra maintenance, whatever it may be. Look at Football for its origin, we played on grass. In, in rainy days, in snow, in mud, it's fun. I don't even understand why we're even still at this point. Like, it's football, played on grass, period. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe to see more videos like this one. And if you ever have any ideas for what More Perfect Union should cover next, please drop them in the comments. Thanks.